Okay, so um, I'm gonna continue some of the discussions I, I've been doing on the Medicaid waiver programs in the state of Texas. I've received a lot of very positive feedback, a lot of appreciation for um, explaining these and kind of bringing a parent perspective to these programs. So again, if, if you're just tuning in now, I did a previous vid video where, where I talked about what waivers were and what waivers were available. Today, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the process and like I said, if you do go to the website I told you, which is medicaidwaiver.org, um, you will find the information about Texas. It'll talk specifically about the waiting list that is in place for these waivers, which like I said, is lengthy, but it depends on the waiver itself. So um, there's a couple uh, waivers that are a little more accessible. One of them is um, MDCP, which is the Medically Dependent Children's Waiver. Now, that waiver is only available if your child has a, um, a, a serious medical condition. It actually phrases, um, support family caring for children who are medically dependent and to ensure the transition of child into a nursing home. So, um, it's not that we, they really think your child's gonna go into a nursing home, but if you have a child with a heart condition or some sort of serious condition that's requiring medical treatment, that waiver is um, accessible to you. And again, you would um, apply for that waiver through the um, Department of Aging and Disability Services. And um, they will evaluate your child's condition once you become eligible. So it's very, if you're, if you're unsure, you can always sign up. The worst is you're not eligible for the waiver. Sometimes the way the wording is in these things, it leaves for ambiguity, which I know is frustrating, but it doesn't hurt you to sign up and I know way back when I signed up for waivers a long, long time ago, um, children with autism were eligible for this waiver and they've changed some of the criteria and they've tightened it up a little bit. And unless your child with autism has like a life-threatening asthmatic condition or heart condition, you're probably not eligible for that waiver. But there's also another one that is a little more accessible than some of the larger waivers and that's called um, Texas Home Living. And um, I did not participate in that program, but I've talked to many families that are able to get access to that quicker. And um, it's essential services and support to people with an intellectual disability or related condition who live in their own home or their family's home. So you might also look into that waiver and investigate that waiver a little bit more. The waiver that I'm most familiar with is um, the one that I called CLASS. And that, that's the one that stands for Community Living Assistance and Supported Service Programs. And this one has a, a fairly lengthy waiting list. I think it's like 15 years. Um, and this, this um, is not based on um, an intellectual disability. So those that are, have higher functioning conditions that don't, have a, don't qualify for an intellectual disability will qualify for class which is exciting and that's also a waiver you can keep throughout your lifespan. But um, it it's, provides home and community-based services for people with related condition as a cost-effective alternative to an intermediate care facility for individuals with intellectual disabilities or related conditions, which they call an ICF. And a related condition is a disability other than an intellectual disability that originated before the age of 22 that affects the ability to function in daily life, which many many of our individuals with high functioning autism don't have an intellectual disability, but they do struggle with their independence in life. So that, like I said, is one of the larger waivers, so it has a longer waiting list. And, and just wanna remind you, you can only be on one waiver at a time. So if you're on Texas Home Living and then you become eligible for class, um, you, you lose your Texas Home Living, which honestly, that's okay because class will cover everything you need. Um, for me as a parent, class has covered um, all the therapy services um, my clients or my kiddos get um, and, and not, I'm not talking OTPT speech, I'm talking things like horseback riding, music therapy, aquatic therapy, rec therapy, some of those other types of programs. It also pays for some respite and attendant care. So when that, that's, that's a waiver I'm real familiar with. The one I'm still on the waiting list for is Home and Community Service, which is HCS. And that is probably one of the largest waivers and that's why it has a long waiting list. I think that's about 25 years, honestly. Um, for those of you that are already on it, you're moving up slowly and this, this one only opens up, same with class, when people leave. 
So when people leave, it opens up more space for it. So um, this provides an individualized service and support to people with intellectual disabilities. So you do have to have an ID for HCS. So if you don't have an intellectual disability, you're gonna stay on class. This is not a waiver. Now, maybe in the next 10 years, that'll change. So it doesn't, again, hurt to sign up because you're gonna be waiting 20 plus years. So things may change, but it's, um, support to people with intellectual disabilities who are living with their families in their own home or in a community setting such as a small group home with no more than four people um, and the local authorities provide service coordination so that's the the definition of HCS again intellectual disability we look at this one for respite care but also for housing this helps to pay for those housing costs so um, once you come up on the list, you're actually notified um, through the mail that you've come up on the list. So make sure you keep your phone numbers and your uh, mailing address up to date with these programs. And again, HCS is the one waiver that you apply through MHMR or Life Pass Systems. The other ones are through DADS or the Department of Aging and Disability Services. But when you become eligible for, for these waivers, they um, will send you a letter and they will set up a meeting and you have to pick two different agencies that you work with. One is a direct service agency and one is a case management company. So they set up a meeting with those, um, those agencies and you, they explain about the waiver and then they um, set up a budget for you. And usually there's a waiting time to get that buzz budget through the state and sometimes it's remanded back and things like that, but it, there's usually a, a three month wait for this to start and then your services will begin at a certain date once that waiver's gone through and the budget is um, re-looked at every year. So you meet with those same two service providers every year. However, those service providers will also be in touch with you throughout the year checking in. They do quarterly uh, meetings where they check in and see how things are going. So um, they have a structure set up. Is it smooth all the time? No. It's like um, any um, business or any agency Sometimes um, you have great service providers and sometimes you have people that move through that system that, that just aren't as skilled as others. So it's real important that you're real educated and aware of what your rights are and what you're eligible with those waivers. So I hope that answers a few more questions. Feel free to um, send messages because I will reach out and do another video if there's further questions on these. Thanks.